Hello and thanks for joining us here at Winton Motor Raceway for round one of the Australian Motor Racing Series. I'm Luke Heismans. Joining me in the commentary box is Lachlan Mansell. Lachlan, we're in for a great year ahead. Really excited about the 2020 AMRS. Some very cool categories on the program. In today's show, we're going to be checking out highlights from the opening round of the series from the Pro Max Performance Exhausts TA2 Muscle Car Series, the Thunder Sports Cup and the Motorsports TV Miniature Race Car. So on that note, Lockie, let's take a look at the calendar ahead. We are, of course, at Winton Motor Raceway for round one. Round two, we'll head to Morgan Park, then South Australia for round three at Talem Bend. We'll be back at Winton Motor Raceway for round four. Queensland Raceway will host round five. Round six, we'll see us head to Sydney Motorsport Park. And for our final round, we'll go to Wakefield Park. To stay up to date with the calendar and, of course, all the latest AMRS news, head to amrseries.com.au. It's already been a big weekend for the Promax Performance Exhausts TA2 Muscle Car Series. Lockie, talk us through the action so far. Well, qualifying was a tight contest between the impressive rookie John McLaughlin and the veteran and 2017 TA2 champion Russell Wright. They swapped positions at the top of the time sheets on a number of occasions throughout the qualifying session, but in the end it was Russell Wright who came out of the pits and had a second run who ended up taking pole position by a fairly minuscule margin aboard his number 55 Ford Mustang with a very committed lap late in the session to move up to the top of the time sheet. He snatched the PWR Performance Products Pole Position Award and he caught up with our own Kylie King at the end of the session. Quite a bit lucky actually because I nearly didn't go back out for a second run and that worked. Um, but it's going to be tight because it's uh, six cars within a second so it's going to be uh, a tough race. As the cars take to the track and we prepare for race three, it's great to have Promax Performance Exhausts now on board as our new TA2 Muscle Car Series sponsor. And Kylie King caught up with Anthony Bright from Promax earlier on in the weekend. Catching up with Anthony Bright in pit lane. Now, I just had a little chat with Craig Denyer because uh, Promax Performance Exhaust, rather, are the naming rights uh, sponsors for the TA2 series. Uh, a great alignment, but tell us a little bit about yourselves. Yeah, absolutely. We're really excited to be part of the uh, Promax TA2 race series. Um, there's some great associations. Uh, it's an exciting category. It's a loud category. It's a really competitive category. Uh, the vehicles themselves, you know, uh, being the Mustangs, the Camaros, and the challenges. It's the new muscle car for the Australian market. Um, uh, the alignment with our exhaust programs that run, which is very much what we focus on those vehicles. Um, there's just a really good synergy there, so we're really excited to be part of that. Now I see the old Steve Petty Motorsports uh, branding on the shirt there, a bit of a, obviously an association and a link, what can you tell us? Yeah absolutely, uh, Steve Petty from the US, uh, we've been friends for seven or eight years now, he's been trying to push the Australian market and have some sort of association, uh, the door opened uh, middle of last year for that to transpire so we thought we'd give it a go. Um, the advantage is the market's changing from a car variation here in Australia. We're seeing a lot more of the American based vehicles coming such as the Mustang and the Camaro. Um, so we have access via our association with Steve to those vehicles before they hit the Australian market so that we can develop our products accordingly and hopefully be you know, at the forefront of the market when they become available. And you know, the later uh, part of our association, we're now in the process of manufacturing and exporting these exhausts back to Steve Petty in the US for the US market. It was an event filled race two that will set the grid for our upcoming race three. Of course, the big news was the coming together of number 17, John McLaughlin, and our pole sitter number 55, Russell Wright, after Jason Hassett blew an engine and causing both John McLaughlin and Russell Wright to come together. John McLaughlin was able to escape with minimal damage and go on to win the race, but unfortunately that spelled the end for Russell Wright with a DNF. So let's take a look at the grid for race three. Of course, John McLaughlin will be starting in first, Murray Kent in second, Michael Cooley in third, 
In fourth will be Michael Coulter, and rounding out the top five will be Graham Sheeney. Some other good battles to keep an eye on. The battle for rookie honours. John McLaughlin certainly been very impressive in that regard so far. And also Russell Wright charging his way through from the rear of the field. It's great to have these onboard shots in various cars, but we are racing now for race three of the TA2 Muscle Car Series. And of course, into turn one, Murray Kent leads, elbows out over John McLaughlin. Excellent start, excellent reaction from the outside of the front row from Murray Kent. A few cars running door to door as they exit turn number two. The Winton circuit has been recently reprofiled in a couple of corners, particularly these two turns here. Turns three and four, the drivers are able to carry a lot more entry speed. Michael Kulwink lost third position off the start to Michael Coulter. He slots back to fourth position on this opening lap. So a huge thank you to Promax Performance Exhausts for these fantastic onboard shots as we ride with Michael Cooling trying to find a way past Michael Coulter, but it is Murray Kent who leads over John McLaughlin in that number 17 Ford Mustang. It's been an impressive debut weekend so far for John McLaughlin. Got the winning race too after a wheels wheel battle all race long against Russell Wright in both races one and two, but he finds himself in second position once again, John McLaughlin putting the pressure on Murray Kent and some dramas here for Mark Crutcher, the young driver in the Dodge Challenger, he's off the road. Let's head back to our leaders now doing battle around turn 11 into turn 12 before the start finish straight. It is still Murray Kent who leads over John McLaughlin and Michael Coulter in third. Four speed manual gearboxes for these TA2 muscle cars, different body shells for them. Of course, we have the Camaro, the Mustang, and the Challenger, but identical mechanical specifications. They all run Control V8 motors driven through those four speed manual gearboxes. Very physical cars to hustle around a tight and technical circuit like Winton Raceway. Absolutely, Lockie. Let's take a look at the replay of the start thanks to Promax as we ride on board with John McLaughlin. Oh, he actually missed a gear there, which allowed Murray Kent to get the jump on him into turn one. You could hear the sound of the engine revs just temporarily rising for a fraction of a second, couldn't you, with that missed shift? And that's been enough to cost him the lane. Let's have a look at what happened to Mark Crutcher on the opening lap. This is running down into turn four. Ah, he's had contact with, that was Warren Truen there on the outside. So those two cars have made side to side contact. That's obviously done some damage to Mark Crutcher's car, which has unfortunately seen him pull off to the infield. As we ride back on board now with Michael Coolig in fourth spot, looking for a way past Michael Coulter there in front of him. But Murray Kent still leads over John McLaughlin on the charge down to turn 10, Bowden's own corner this weekend, Lockie. So it's a battle in two by two at the moment as Coolig goes for a move down the inside of Coulter at turn 10. Coulter left the door open. Coolig sensed the opportunity and was able to dive down the inside. Coulter with the better drive out of the corner. He looked to fight back on the inside down into turn 11. Gets his nose up the inside. A little bit of a bump between the two cars. Coulter not quite able to recapture the position. Glad Coulter backed out there when he did. That could have gone awry. But ooh, we have a safety car out. So this will bunch up the field. And we're hearing that there's actually a grass fire in the infield of the circuit here at Winton Moher Raceway. So the ever hard-working officials on their way up there to get the extinguishers onto that. Could be that somebody's hot exhaust has ignited the quite dry grass there on the exit of Turn 5, the sweeper. Let's look at the replay of Michael Cooley diving down the inside of Turn 10 there over Michael Coulter. Coulter didn't really put up much of a defence there, did he? The door was open. Coolidge sets the opportunity, and with these cars being so evenly matched, if there's even a sniff of an overtaking opportunity that presents itself, you have to go for it, and that's what Michael Coolidge was able to do. As we go back live now, we are under green flag. We are racing again, and it is still Murray Kent that leads the field into turn one and out of turn two. There's Russell Wright a little bit further back. He's worked his way up quite a few positions after starting at the rear of the field. And Murray Kent having to take a slightly defensive inside line into turn three. Michael Cooling's closing in onto this as well, so it's now becoming a three-car battle for the race lead. Michael Cooling's hoping that John McLaughlin and Murray Kent start to carve each other up, and that's going to open the door for him. We're loving these on-board shots with Promax this weekend. Just look at how close they are. These cars look and sound fantastic, and this is what we want to see, a four-way battle for the lead. And drivers with varying degrees of experience in TA2 and in different motorsport categories occupying the top four positions at the moment. Murray Kent, very 
experienced in Queensland motorsport. The driver in second position, John McLaughlin. We've seen him racing nationally in the Toyota Racing Six Racing Series. Michael Kulnick, another Queenslander, and Michael Coulter, a driver who's previously raced in stock cars. Head down the field to have a look at Brett Nile there in the number 54. Someone's turning this into a rally cross stage. That's Tim Tritton and on board with Anthony Tenkate. So this could be the end of both of their races. So damage to both of those cars. They were battling for position just inside the top 10, but it looks like they've had a coming together on the exit of turn 10. Back with your leader now, Murray Kent, still ahead of John McLaughlin, who can't find a way past. Michael Cooling in third. Here's the replay, Lockie. So on board with Anthony Tenkate. This is the run down into turn 10. Now Tim Tritton's the car ahead. He's one a little bit wide of it as he's coming back onto the circuit having dropped his wheels over that exit curve that he's collected Anthony Tenkate, who unfortunately was very much the innocent victim in that one. Wrong place, wrong time for Anthony Tenkate. Back to your race leader now, Murray Kent, doing a fantastic job defending over John McLaughlin as we ride back on board with Michael Coolig. This is the final lap, so only a couple of overtaking opportunities left in the final two corners. Murray Kent leads out of turn 12, John McLaughlin getting it a little crossed up, but I don't think it's going to matter. It is Murray Kent ahead of John McLaughlin just over Michael Cooling for race three. Really, really stout performance from Murray Kent. He had to absorb a lot of pressure from John McLaughlin all race long. Michael Cooling, Michael Coulter and the impressive rookie Graham Chaney completing your top five. But a great drive there from our race winner, Murray Kent, who's with Kylie King in pit lane. It is, yeah. I'm a bit stunned, to be honest. Yeah, I got a fantastic jump and probably held John up a little bit, but it was a good race. I'm, yeah, stuck. Absolutely stuck. And what's it like having a driver of the calibre of John right on your hammer through that race? Oh, yeah, look, I'm not saying I'm better than him, that's for sure, but I just got a good jump, and, yeah, he was right on me the whole way, so it was a fair push. It was great. We're getting set for the Promax Performance Exhausts TA2 Muscle Car Series race number four. And speaking of number four, we're riding on board right now with Mark Crutcher in the number four, Lockie race three did not disappoint. It certainly didn't. It was an epic battle at the front of the field. Murray Kent had to hold on from John McLaughlin. They will resume their battle in this race. Michael Cooling and Michael Coulter. Also, a couple of other impressive rookies, Graham Chaney and Brett Nile, rounding out your top six. Good to see in car number four, Mark Crutcher back out there after his incident on the opening lap of the previous race. But number 55, Russell Wright, he'll be one to watch as the cars head down the start finish straight now as we get set to go racing for race four here at Winton Motor Raceway and it is Murray Kent with the inside line over John McLaughlin. The TA2 muscle cars thunder their way down into turns one and two. Whoa. Dramas at the back, Christopher Formosa in the Dodge Challenger having a big moment. A few other cars having to go off the road to avoid contact. That looked like Peter Hurd and Warren True in there. So Formosa, he's already had some dramas this weekend, the crashing race one. His team had to repair his car overnight. Good to see him back. Hopefully not too much more damage because that's the last thing that he and his crew would need at the moment. But riding on board with Russell Wright, who came from the rear of the field up to seventh in the previous race. They look to pick off a few more positions in this one as he looks up the inside of Graham Chaney into turn seven. Murray Kent still has the upper hand over John McLaughlin. Michael Cooley in third, and it looked like Coulter behind him in fourth. John McLaughlin, he needs to keep the pressure on Murray Kent here because these two drivers, not only are they battling for the race win, but they're battling for the overall round win as well. And the one who might be well placed here if these two start squabbling too much with one another is Michael Cooley, who sits in third position. How good are these Pro Max onboard shots, Lockie? This is really taking you up close to the action. You can see just how hard the drivers have to work behind the wheels of these TA2 cars as well. They all run control Kuzia slick tyres, but with the high horsepower that these cars produce, plenty of wheel work required to keep them on the straight and narrow. And McLaughlin looking down the inside, but covering off a bit of dust and debris on the inside there. And I think that might have caught out our race leader, Murray Kent. It has, and it's McLaughlin who takes advantage and slips up the inside on the run into turn three. He was definitely compromised there on the exit of turn two was Murray Kent. And it looks like Michael Coolig has also capitalised on that as we ride on board with him right now. But he's dived up the inside and is now sitting in second. 
And this is why there was dust and debris all over the racetrack at turns one and two. A massive moment on the entry to the first corner for Christopher Formosa. I tell you what, Luke, that could have ended a lot worse than it did. Some great avoiding action from some of the other drivers to Miss Formosa's sliding car. This is what it looks like on board the number 49 just coming in too hot and couldn't couldn't pull it up and took out one of the double ASA signs there on the inside of turn one as well. Graham Cheney and Graham Smith, these two drivers battling over position at the moment. Apart from John McLaughlin, they are two of the highest placed rookie drivers in the field. Graham Cheney's come out of off-road motorcycle racing. Graham Smith, a former competitor in Victorian Porsche 944s, along with the Toyota A6 racing series. And they've both done a great job adapting to the cut and thrust of TA2 racing. As we ride back on board now with Russell Wright trying to carve his way up through the field. He started in seventh. And he's now sitting in what looks to be about fourth spot now. We go back to qualifying in race one. We saw just how fast Russell Wright was. So it goes to show just how closely matched these cars are, how tough it is to overtake if you find yourself back in the pack. But he will make a position up the inside of Michael Coulson. as he goes at turn seven. I don't know if you saw that, Lockie, but there was a big puff of smoke that came out the back of Coulter's car then when we were riding on board with Wright. As we now look to Darren Berry, who is in the pits. That is a definite unscheduled pit stop. Indeed, so not ideal for him. And here's Cheney up the inside of Coulter as well. So that telltale puff of smoke that you picked up there, Luke, I think there might be a bit more to that story. And I reckon that Coulter's nursing some sort of mechanical problem at the moment. Both the rookies there got past him very easily around Bowden's own corner number 10. As we watch the replay again, oh, look at Cheney having to really pull that up hard under the brakes. But... Coulter didn't really offer much in the way of defence there. I think he was kind of happy to let the two get past him there. At this stage, I reckon that Coulter's is just trying to nurse that car home as Russell Wright finds himself with a bit of clear track to start punching out the sorts of lap oh, times that car's capable of if he doesn't make wide. mistakes like that. And he rotates the car all together. That's on the approach to turn seven. Oh, that's such a shame too, Lockie. He was doing so well up until that point. And then I think just came in a little bit too hot on the exit of turn five into turn six. Yeah, just couldn't get it turned in. Turn six there has caught him out. Let's see where he rejoins the track though, because he was doing it, he was having a great drive. It's he a will, rare mistake. A rare mistake from our former series champion. He will lose at least a couple of positions out of that one. He'll tuck back in behind these two, Cheney and Smith, who continue their battle. Cheney locking it up there, trying to defend against Graham Smith. The battle of the Grahams, the battle of the rookies as Smith pulls out to the right, thinks better of it, tucks back in. He's keeping the pressure on Cheney, and Cheney's going to crumble under that pressure and make a mistake. Locks the rear brakes at turn one. Was that the commentator's curse there, Lockie, as he applied the pressure? And we were talking about what a great job Graham Cheney had done all weekend as well, getting closer and closer to the front of the field with every race, a couple of top five finishes in races two and three. But you can see there, you don't have to be very far beyond the braking limit there to find that you lock the rears and then you go pirouetting off the circuit very rapidly. And this is what it looked like riding on board with Cheney. There was nothing he could do there, unfortunately, and Graham Smith says, thank you very much, I'll have that spot. We'll turn our attention now straight back to the battle for second and third. John McLaughlin's checked out as Michael Coolig passes Chris Formosa, who's probably having a weekend to forget at this stage. So Michael Coolig in a very solid second position at this stage. He's just eased out a bit of breathing space ahead of Murray Kent. Up at the front of the field, though, John McLaughlin has checked out. Now that he's got clear track, he's been able to exploit the performance of his car. And we've got more dramas for Graham Cheney. Once again, this is down at Turn 1. This time it involves another rookie driver in the field, Brett Nile, the West Australian. We might come back to that a little bit later on. Let's go back to Murray Kent now, chasing down Michael Coolig on the hunt for that second spot. And here's the replay coming into Turn 1. Cheney in way too hot and... Brett Nile did nothing wrong there. And as Brett Nile spun back across the circuit, the rear of his car has clipped the left rear of Cheney's car. And unfortunately, that would be Cheney's day done after such a promising debut weekend. But speaking of promising debut weekends, how about this performance from John McLaughlin? Something about the surname McLaughlin, Mustangs and the number 17, Luke. 
It really is driving 101. He is putting on a masterclass for us here today as he rounds turn 12 onto the start finish straight for the final time. It will be John McLaughlin that takes the honours for race four. Comprehensive victory in the end for John McLaughlin. And not only does he win race four, but he will also pick up the overall round victory. Second position goes the way of Michael Cooley. Murray Kent in third spot. Graeme Smith next ahead of Russell Wright. Mark Crutch, a great drive through the field. Rear of the grid up to sixth spot. And then Warren True and Brett Lyle, Peter Hurd and Chris Rosa rounding out the top ten. Kylie is with our race and round winner. Yeah, I mean, all weekend we've had the pace to be at the front and um, I just haven't been able to use, utilise it too much. So to get that pass done uh, early on in this race allowed me to put a gap on the rest of the field, show what pace we actually have in the car and, um, yeah, I had a good race. Oh, yeah, that was tough. That was real tough, but it was probably the, that's the best result I've had. I thought third was it and embedded it by one, which is really good. I'm really, really happy with that um, and I'll take it. And Never felt as good in a long time. Oh, it was, yeah. Forgot the cool suit, that's all right. Yeah, we got there in the end. Yeah, tried a different strategy with tyres and uh, a bit weaker at the start, but congrats to uh, John and Michael. They did a fantastic job. What a weekend of racing it has been and a fantastic way to kick off the Pro Max Performance Exhaust TA2 Muscle Car Series. So for the weekend, your overall professional outright winner was John McLaughlin ahead of Murray Kent in second and Michael Cooley in third. Looking at the Masters class results, very well done to Graham Smith. He takes the Masters class overall round win on debut ahead of Peter Hurd and the consistent Paul Hadley in third position. Smiles all around on the TA2 Muscle Cars podium. John McLaughlin not only the round winner, but also the winner of the Rookie of the Round award at Winton Motor Raceway. And he'll head to the next round at Morgan Park as the points later. Don't go anywhere. Coming up after the break, we have the Phoenix Lubricants Thunder Sports Cup. Welcome back to Winton Motor Raceway and round one of the Australian Motor Racing Series. It's a hot day here in Winton as we prepare for the Phoenix Lubricants Thunder Sports Cup. And we've been treated to some fantastic racing so far, Lockie. And it's all about big, loud, fast, exciting race cars that produce plenty of action, plenty of entertainment. Kylie King is with a driver who's had a bit of a tough run this weekend. She's catching up with Brent Edwards. This is a story of resilience and resurrection and having our fingers crossed. Brent Edwards, uh, was a tough start to your weekend. Talk us through what happened. That started really with your first outing in practice. Yeah, it's been a pretty trying weekend. Uh, we uh, went out for first practice and uh, made have been a mistake that, um, in turn two. Uh, car came off the kerbs a little bit awkwardly and uh, into the tie wall fairly deep. And uh, we thought we were out for the weekend. So we're ready to pack up and uh, Sent a few pictures back to Melbourne and uh, my brother Trav who uh, helps us prepare the car, he's not here this weekend, he said bring it back here, I reckon we can fix it, we've got the parts so let's do it. So by the time we packed up got out of here and we got back to uh, Tyab at uh, 6 o'clock at night and we had it all fixed by 12 o'clock, uh, packed up had a few hours sleep and brought it back up here in time for uh, qualifying yesterday so it was an absolutely amazing effort. An amazing effort indeed just to even be here as the cars take to the track ahead of race four this weekend and race three certainly uh, provided a lot of action didn't it Lockie? Certainly did one of the great things about the Thunder Sports Cup is that we've got a big variety of different types of race cars race number four is going to feature a reverse grid format which should produce plenty of overtaking and plenty of passing as some of the faster cars come through the field. But let's have a look at what happened in race three. Stephen Shilby, who'd won the previous two races, started on pole position. The reigning champion Mark Tracy in that bright red BMW A36 slotted into third position. It's a bit further back in the pack where we saw some good battle groups of cars. But it was all about that man. 2-2-6. Two, two, Stephen Chilby in that Oz truck. Mark Tracy had no answers. We look at Merrick Maloof and Brett Mitchell doing battle as well. Brett Mitchell up the inside there at turn one. He'd finish in fourth and Maloof would finish in seventh, of course. And that Prime Finance Youth, they're our sponsor of the Hard Charger Award this weekend, Lucky. Indeed they are. Some good class battles a bit further down the order as well. John Rostevsky, one of our class B runners involved in a battle with Hayden Burrell in the Lotus Exchange. Mid-engine cars are now eligible for the Thunder Sports Cup as well. Burrell running wide at turn number 10 and surrendering that spot. And we turn our attention back towards the front of the field. 
Merrick Maloof in the Falcon Ute in a battle with Nathan Rourke in the Falcon Sedan. There were battles everywhere you look as Joshua Dow in the Ford held off Daniel Vander Hayden in the Commodore as John Rostevsky took a off-track excursion there coming around turn 12. Nathan Rourke down the inside of Merrick Maloof into turn three, but out breaks himself, ran wide off into the dust. Merrick Maloof shot through on the inside and recaptured the position, but it was Stephen Shelby who picked up his third race victory of the weekend by a comprehensive margin as well. He really hasn't set a foot wrong, so reverse grid for the start of race four. Hayden Morell, Brent Edwards, Merrick Maloof, Daniel Flanagan and Sam Collins will lead class A this race. So the grid is reversed within each class, so the class A cars still starting ahead of the class B cars, but, but the positions within each class are reversed. That means Stephen Chilby will be coming from a bit further back in the pack for this fourth and final race of the weekend ahead of Nathan Rourke there was a non-finishing in race number three. Once again, we've got some great onboard cameras thanks to Phoenix Lubricants bringing us all of the action. And here we go. It is Hayden Morell with the inside line into turn one. Merrick Maloof comes in two hots, giving him a nudge, and Hayden's being spun. And cars will have to take evasive action to avoid a head-on collision with that Lotus. I think Stephen Chilby might have just lightly grazed the rear end of Hayden Morell's exige as he went through on the outside, but it was Daniel Flanagan who was pinching Morell up against the curb, and like you said there, Merrick Maloof making contact with the rear of Hayden Morell's car and sending it into a spin at Turn 1. On board now with Damien Hunter in the Renault Clio as he tries to find a way past Owen Boak in the Mazda MX-5. The big left-hander, the sweeper, Turn 5. Not the place to overtake, but maybe he'll have a look into Turn 6 and 7. Damien Hunter, he's been a giant killer this weekend with the little front wheel drive forcing on Renault Clio. It's been taking the fight up to far more powerful cars all weekend. He's won all three of the races in Class B and once again putting in a very, very solid performance in this final race. Safety car is out and that's because we do have a Lotus parked on the exit of Turn 2. And thanks to Amber Direct, here's a replay of how it all went wrong for Hayden Morell at Turn 1. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time there. Merrick Maloof coming in way too fast. And he's given a big nudge to Hayden Morell and caused a lot of cars to have to take evasive action there around turn two. All of the drivers did a really good job of avoiding a head-on collision with the Lotus. Brent Edwards, you can see, all of a sudden, he found his path blocked. Went to the right, but the problem for him was that he had Brett Mitchell on his right-hand side as well. So it's really, really good awareness and anticipation from those drivers to avoid what could have been a multi-car pile-up. And you can see how hard it is for them to see through that thick dust. It's amazing cat-like reflexes there from a lot of the field. So lights are out on the safety car set for a race start and it's going to be the Canberra production car racer and driving instructor Daniel Flanagan in his HSV who will lead the field. Mark Tracy makes up a couple of spots for the race start, gets down the inside of Merrick Maloof and also Brett Mitchell. Watch out though for Stephen Chilby coming through in that Oz truck. He has been the form driver all weekend. And they're looking to charge his way back up into first position. What a restart by Tracy as he now dies down the inside of turn three to lead. But he sets it a little bit wide and Flanagan says, thank you, I'll take that back around turn four using every bit of those new curbs here at Winton. Daniel Flanagan's car, because it's pretty much a standard production car, a bit heavier than some of the other machines that have been on big weight reduction programs. So he'll do pretty well here, Daniel Flanagan, to try and hold out some of these faster vehicles. But uh, we're hearing from the officials, Luke, that Mark Tracy's start has been deemed the race start to have been a little bit too good. He's going to be on the receiving end of a 10 second post-race time penalty. He came out of nowhere, didn't he? And I think the red mist has truly descended on Mark Tracy in that red BMW because he's, of course, been staring at the back of Stephen Chilby's Oz truck for most of the weekend, so he really wants a race win. He gets the move done on Daniel Flanagan on the run into turn 10. Flanagan about to come under pressure from the Brett Mitchell-driven Oz truck, which just blasts its way out of that 10th corner and will get down on the inside of Flanagan as they head into turn 11. Flanagan's car will have the strength under brakes and he looks to do the switchback, but the problem for him is the Commodore just doesn't quite have the straight line performance of the Oz trucks. And good to see Cora Gillen up there in the lead pack as well. Then an up and down weekend for one of the main title contenders from the 2019 season. As we watch Gillett now on the inside of turn one, Flanagan trying to get the switch back in the inside of turn two. He's done it. 
but he's getting swarmed by the Nissan Sylvias of both Gillett and Sam Collins now. As Collins moves up the inside of Gillett into turn three. Oh, and now Flanagan out way too wide there on the exit of turn three. Good awareness there from Samuel Collins because he saw that Flanagan was a bit wide. He saw that Cora Gillett was checked up. The Queensland driver in that yellow Nissan Sylvia was able to get up the inside and gain the position. As we say, Damien Hunt, we talked about the giant killing performances from the Renault. He's putting the pressure on the six-cylinder Falcon of Brent Edwards. Look at the amount of mid-corner speed that this little Renault Clio is able to carry and look at just how hard Damien Hunt drives it. Damien Hunter there positioning the car in the middle of the track, making sure to give no room to Damien Hunter. Because as soon as he opens the door, Damien's going through as we ride back on board. Listen to the sound, that sweet sound of the Renault Clio. It's a high revving engine, isn't it? And it'll have to be revved quite hard because it will produce its power a lot higher in the rev range compared to the Ford, which will have much more low-end torque and therefore better power delivery coming off some of the slower corners. But the battle between these Nissan Sylvia combatants continues. Sam Collins holding out Cora Gillett, who's based just up the road from Winton Motor Raceway on the border at Albury Wodonga. So he's done a lot of laps around the nation's action track. Back on board with Damien Hunter now into turn three. Still staring at the back of Brent Edwards Falcon. Has a think about it. Takes the sharper line. Doesn't quite have the speed on the exit of either turn three or four there. He's going to have to uh, be content to stare at the bumper for a little bit longer. This is a classic battle between cars that have got strengths and weaknesses in different parts of the racetrack. Brent Edwards, he'll pull away in the straighter sections of track where the top speeds are higher. But through these tight and twisty bits, the quick direction changes through turns 7, 8 and 9. That's Renault territory. That's where Damien Hunter's car comes to the fore. And a look at that. Stephen Shelby, he had to start further down the grid because of the reverse format. But he's already worked his way back to the front. What a weekend Stephen Shelby is having. That Oz truck just looks like it's on rails. Not only does it have some amazing straight line speed, but he also hasn't set a foot wrong. Stepped up to the Oz truck after competing in the Legend Car Series previously, and can you believe, Luke, that since he purchased and started racing that Oz truck, he has not lost a race. Oh, as we watch Collins and Gillett get very close there on the entrance to turn one. It's now the battle of the Nissan Sylvias. Gillett looks to go down the inside of turn three. Does he have enough? Yes, he does. So Cora Gillett moves up a spot as we check out the Prime Finance replay of that manoeuvre. Prime Finance on board as well to sponsor the Hard Charger Award for the weekend. And that was a fairly textbook manoeuvre there from Cora Gillett heading through turns three and four. As we watch this battle between Damien Hunter and Edwards in front of him still if you're watching at home and wondering how to tell Class A and Class B apart during this race, just look for the banner on the windshield, or the windscreen. If it's white, they're in Class A. If it's black, they're in Class B. So this is the move for the lane that happens just before. In the end, fairly straightforward there for Stephen Chilby. Is that around the outside of Turn 10 there, Lockie? It certainly is. So it just shows the confidence that Stephen Chilby is driving with this weekend goes all the way around the outside of the reigning series champion through the left-hander. And if Tracy's not careful, he'll just watch Chilby disappear off into the sunset as he has the last few races. Good news for Mark Tracy, though. We talked about that 10-second time penalty for him earlier on. He has managed to extend more than a 10-second gap over the next car behind. So at this stage, that penalty is not going to cost him any positions. And this is Josh Dow now who's trying to hold off a charging Owen Boak. And Daniel van der Hayden behind him as well in a battle for 10th. And I think that's also a battle for third in Class B. Indeed, it is really good to see these different types of cars. Josh Dow in his Falcon. Owen Boak, a long-time campaigner in Mazda MX-5s. And Daniel van der Hayden, a driver who's done a lot of laps in club-level motorsport events at Winton Raceway. As we ride on board with... Brent Edwards' massive uphill battle as we heard from Kylie King just to be on the racetrack this weekend after a crash in Friday practice. Definitely a contender for the Hard Charger Award this weekend. All of the work that he's had to do just to keep that car running, it has been very, very 
tireless efforts from the entire team off the racetrack to keep that Falcon running, but still he hasn't been able to dispose of this pesky little Renault. Damien Hunt is still looming in the mirrors of Brent Edwards, keeping the pressure on the Falcon driver. Damien is driving the wheels off this Renault. Look at the drown that he makes through turns one and two just as a result of the nimble handling of the Renault and Brent Edwards has to defend to the inside on the run into turn three. Tell you what though, Edwards uh, sponsors Cable Source. They're absolutely loving the coverage he's getting this weekend as we go back to Brett Mitchell in that number eight Chevrolet Malu Ute. But we'll turn our attention back to the leader. It is Stephen Chilby on the last lap, rounding turn 12 for the final time. Another fantastic race from Stephen Shilby. He takes the chequered flag and a clean sweep for the weekend. And keeps intact his 100% winning record in the Oz truck as well. So comprehensive round victory, maximum points for him ahead of reigning series champion Mark Tracy, who comes home second. Corey Gillett finishes off an up and down weekend with a top three finish ahead of Brett Mitchell. The Queenslander Sam Collins. Maloof Edwards and Damien Hunter who wins Class B once again finishing in 8th position outright ahead of Josh Dow and Owen Boak as we head down to Kylie King with our race winners in pit lane. It's good jumping on board with Thundersports as the first um, event I've done with them so um, the, the whole crew they're awesome welcoming and, and um, enjoyed the whole lot yeah it's great. Yeah we're having a crack aren't we to come away with 4 wins of the weekend started not quite at the back in the last race there was a few DNF, uh, sorry, DNFs in the third race so a couple of cars behind us, but we got through. There's a bit of an incident on turn one, though. We're lucky to escape that. That was a great race. It was a great race indeed. And so let's have a look at now at how all the points have wrapped up for the Phoenix Lubricants Thunder Sports Cup after round one. In Class A, it was Stephen Chilby with a clean sweep, finishing first with 100 full points ahead of Mark Tracy, Sam Collins, Corey Gillett and Brett Mitchell. Damien Hunter taking a clean sweep in Class B to pick up a maximum score of 100 points ahead of Daniel van der Hayden, Josh Dow, Owen Boak and John Rostevsky. And that wraps up the action from Round 1 of the Thunder Sports Cup. Big thank you to all of the fantastic sponsors including Amble Direct, Prime Finance, Rook Finance and Albury, Wodonga and District Car Club. And there's plenty of racing coming up after the break with Motorsports TV Miniature Race Cars Race Number 5. Welcome back to a very hot day here at Winton Motor Raceway, the nation's action track. We've been treated to some fantastic racing from both the Pro Max Performance Exhaust TA2 Muscle Cars and the Phoenix Lubricants Thunder Sports Cup, but now it's time to turn our attention to the miniature race cars, brought to you of course by Motorsports TV. Kylie King is down catching up with Gary Roberts and his very cool mini muscle car. There's something quite special on the grid at the Miniature Race Cars this weekend. It's a mini muscle car. It's a HQ Holden making its debut. The driver behind the wheel, Gary Roberts, not just behind the wheel, but basically he's put this little beast together. How exciting. Yeah, it's re really exciting for Miniature Race Cars. It's a new step forward, something we did with um, Chad. We spoke to him about it about 18 months ago and said, we've got a new concept and we want to do it. And he was all for it. So, yeah, that's what we came up with the XB Falcon first. And uh, last Thursday we finished this. HQ Monaro and yeah we're wrapped over here today. Now tell us about the specifics mechanically, some prototype stuff in there as well. Yeah um, we've had a lot of prototype stuff, a lot of help from people, we tried to keep all Australian companies involved so uh, Simon Fitzner over in Adelaide has made us a custom transaxle, we've got a Rover V8 in there, uh, we're running against motorcycle powered um, cars so we've kept it, the power to a minimum, it's a little bit heavier but we just want to be competitive, middle pack and just it's more about the show and bringing something for people to watch, bring back the Holden Ford rivalry that everyone's missing. And you certainly have given them something to watch Gary as we ride on board now with Matthew Thewlis as the cars take to the track ahead of race five who were treated to some fantastic racing earlier on with races three and four. Lockie how about you talk us through what happened there? A new format for the miniature race cars this year Luke so every race is a full reverse grid of the previous race so that means that the fast cars always have to fight their way through the pack and that has produced plenty of overtaking and plenty of 
exciting racing, which has been fantastic to see. Gary Roberts in race number three, getting the early jump in that beautifully presented mini muscle car, the HQ Monaro. But a couple of the future race drivers, BJ Lemon battling it out with Craig White. And a spin for Peter Griffiths in his Nissan Ultima body Aussie racing car coming out of turn 12, the final corner. It was Matthew Thewlis there, Lockie, that gave Peter a nudge and Thewlis has ended up in the gravel trap. As we watch now, Craig White overtaking Gary Roberts round turn three to take the lead. But of course, Thewlis's car in the gravel trap ended with a safety car coming out. So that bunched up the field and at the race start it was Craig White, the two-time and reigning series champion who held the lead, but he was under a bit of pressure from young Blake Purdy, the South Australian. Meanwhile, Gary Roberts in the HQ Monaro was holding out a big freight train of Aussie racing cars, including the recovering Peter Griffiths. But it was Craig White who took the win, Blake Purdy who finished up in position two. That race became a little bit of a race of attrition too. He started with 10 cars and only finished with six. Race four did not disappoint either. As Gary Roberts in that beautiful HQ Mini muscle car led the pack again in the reverse grid through turns one and two. But BJ Lemon didn't need much of an invitation before sending it down the inside of turns six and seven to take the race lead. Because they are such small cars, these miniature race cars, they can overtake in spots that full-size race cars cannot. And Matthew Thewlis, after his dramas in the previous race, was pretty keen to make event amends, and he got involved in a door-to-door -door battle with Blake Purdy. As we watch now, as Peter Griffiths and Craig White shoot up the inside of Gary Roberts around turn 11. Unfortunately for Gary, that car does not have any power steering, and with this heat, he just starts to struggle with his energy levels as the race unwinds and he finds himself falling backward through the field. Mechanically, it is quite a different car to the motorcycle engine Aussie racing cars and future races as well. Blake Purdy there making the move on Matt Thewlis. DJ Lemon getting the job done on Thewlis as well. That's around through turns three and four. But it was another race victory that went the way of Craig White. He's setting up for a pretty good weekend. And you mentioned Blake Purdy just before, Lockie. I've been super impressed with that 15-year-old and I'm going to be keen to see what he can do in this final race of the weekend. As well as the on-track activity, he also does a lot of online sim racing as well to keep himself sharp in between racing events, Blake Purdy. But we are gearing up now for the fifth and final race of the weekend. And once again, Luke, it will feature a reverse grid format. And it's lights out and we go racing for the final race of the weekend here. Motorsport TV's miniature muscle cars. It is Gary Roberts with the inside line. BJ Lemon coming around the outside and makes it stick. But it looks like Gary Roberts just managed to cut back. He has. Side by side they will go heading into turn number three and it is Gary Roberts in the number seven HQ Monaro who will hold the lead on this opening lap. We ride on board with... Peter Griffiths in the Nissan Altima. He's tucked up in behind Matt Thewlis as they head into the sweeper. You can get a sense from these Motorsports TV onboard cameras, Luke, just the sorts of vibrations and physical energy that you get when you're in the driver's seat of one of these cars. You are very close to the ground. You sit with one leg either side of the steering column and it's very, very physical inside the cockpit. Just like driving a big go-kart is not lucky as we ride on board again with Matthew Thewlis staring at the bumper of Klein in that Shell Helix livery and Craig White as well who's managed to get himself up there into third spot now. Craig White has become the master of these charges through the field in each race which with the reverse grid format that's what he's had to do keep working his way through to the front of the field Blake Purdy starting to make up some spots a bit further back in the pack as well. But Gary Roberts, we know that he is struggling a bit with no power steering in that HQ Monaro, but he's done a good job to keep the future races of the Aussie racing cars at bay on this opening lap. As BJ Lemon now looks to have a run at Roberts into turn one, he's got the inside line. As we ride back on board now with Peter Griffiths into turn one. Like you said, Lockie, it is fantastic to see these onboard shots and see just how hard they have to work to keep those cars in a straight line. But he's now heading up the inside of Thewlis. Ooh, little evasive manoeuvre there. Some serious bumping and rubbing going on there with Blake Purdy on the outside. 
Matt Stewart will sweat up the inside with a big move through on Craig White at turn three. And as he ducked out to make that passing manoeuvre, Peter Griffiths found his nose cut off. So he got checked up on the run into that corner, which allowed Purdy to make the move around the outside. But we can see here that Gary Roberts is just starting to check up some of these other cars. Matt Stewart was tucked in behind Peter Klein in the Shell Hangley delivery to AU Falcon Aussie racing car. As we see a replay of that slightly awkward moment up at turn three. Thought he was going to get down the inside of Fuelless there, but then as Fuelless cut across the front, Blake Purdy's given him a big nudge from the left. Matt Thuel is battling it out with Craig White. Craig White, as mentioned, has won the last two miniature race car series. Matt Thuel is a driver with experience in lots of other different types of cars, including the Nissan Pulsar racing series and production cars as well. Thoroughly enjoying his time in the miniature race car series competition. I'm going to give a big shout out to Matthew Fuelless too because he's actually driving a new car so he's still getting used to all the intricacies behind the wheel so he's doing a great job and Craig White's actually had his throttle restricted for this race due to his dominance earlier on as, as these guys run a restriction program just to try and keep the battles and the racing tight. As we watch the progression here up the hill and the run down into turn three, this big right hander. What they try and aim for in the miniature race cars, Luke, is to get the power to weight ratio the same between the cars. So the future races do run the Suzuki High Busan motor, whereas the Aussie racing cars run the slightly lower capacity Yamaha motor, and they try and equalise the performance between those engines the best that they can. If we turn our attention now to Craig White looking for a way past Klein. The inside of turn six, he's given him a huge shunt. Oh, was the door open there, Lockie? I don't know. Matt Thuel is there taking some evasive action and making up at least one position as a result of that. But I'll tell you what, I don't think the door was fully open there. I think that Craig White was putting his nose into a gap where Peter Klein wouldn't have been expecting him. And unfortunately, Klein's ended up worse for wear there. He'll have to rejoin toward the back of the pack. As we jump back on board with Peter Griffiths in a battle with Thuelis, you can see just out the left window there. He's got the inside line, but Thuelis is carrying some greater speed around the outside of that corner. As they charge down the start, finish straight once again, that run into turns one and two. Peter Griffiths looking for a slipstream advantage for Matt Thuelis, and he'll dive to the inside with the extra speed at turn one and recapture that position. These two have been battling all race long. They've swapped positions on a number of occasions, but because the contest between them has been so intense, it's allowed a couple of their rivals to skip away up the road. Absolutely, but we'll stick with this for now. Jumping back on board once again with Thuelis. Looking for a way past. He's not going to get it done around turn five, but maybe he'll position himself for a run down the inside into turn six and seven. And the battle is on at the front between the two future racer drivers, and they will swap the lead as well as Craig White goes down the inside of BJ Lemon to relieve him of first position. Blake Purdy doing a really good job in the Gossip Racing Car as well. Here at a low speed circuit like Winton, the Aussie racing cars don't quite have the punch off the slower corners compared to the future races with their slightly bigger high Busa motor. But Blake Purdy is driving exceptionally well and taking the fight right up to the future races. There was a replay, thanks to Motorsports TV, of the move from Peter Griffiths down the inside there of Fuelis in the run into turn one. As we turn our attention now back to this battle for second between Blake Purdy and BJ Lemon. BJ Lemon currently sitting in second. Purdy in that orange nippies livery, looking for a way past Lemon. Round turn seven, he's got the inside line. He's have, gonna have to go around the long way here. But if he holds this, he's gonna have the inside line around turn nine. And he's done it too. Very, very nicely executed there for Blake Purdy. Like you said, he had to hang tough around the outside through turn eight to make sure that he had the preferred inside line for the next right-hander at turn nine. Great racecraft from the South Australian teenager. He's up into second position. More importantly than that though, Luke, he's in a position to win the round overall if he can stay where he is. What a mature head on such young shoulders. He's done that so well, held his line. They gave each other room. It was good, clean racing. And Blake's come out on top. As you said, he's just 15 years old, going off to race in the ARC category. 
after this, so he's just getting in as much training and as much practice as he can. But now he's got to get his elbows out and withstand the pressure because BJ Lemon's not going to let him just get away with that. And Peter Griffiths, who seems to have finally disposed of Matt Thewlis, is clawing his way into this battle as well. So, Oh, did oh, no. you say that, Lockie? <laughs> he's made a huge mistake. Commentator's curse strikes once again and Peter Griffiths, who was catching up and looking like he was going to be challenging for a top three result, has spun himself out of contention. A top three result definitely goes beckoning there for Peter Griffiths, but this is the hot battle now for position number two. Here's what happened to Peter Griffiths. Just on the exit of turn three, we mentioned before earlier in the show about the great profiling of the racetrack between turns three and four here at Winter Motor Raceway. And it looks like Peter Griffiths just tried to carry a bit too much mid-corner speed there. Yeah, it looked like as he got back on the gas, the rear of that car's just flipped around. And there was nothing he could do to hold that. These cars with their short wheelbases don't give you a lot of warning before they let go, but Craig White the DNF in one of the earlier races means that he won't win the round, but he's bounced back very strongly with victories in all of the final three races of the weekend. Adds another one to his collection. How about Blake Purdy, though? Second position for him. It's going to be enough for him to take the overall round victory in round one of the Motorsports TV miniature race cars. And, of course, as always, Kylie King is down in the pits with our race winner. Yeah, it was, it was a good, uh, good finish at the end of the day. Bit of a... Bit of an upset in uh, round two, uh, race two with a DNF, but uh, all in all good. Um, had a bit of a come together with Pete there, so I apologise for that. But all in all, all good, good bloody weekend, and uh, enjoyed it totally. And yeah, it's definitely been a good weekend. Um, ever since Friday when we rocked up, it's the cars just been hooked. So um, it's good to see that it's still got grip in the final. So um, yeah, comes out with a third. Yeah, it's fantastic, and you know these guys are in your mirrors. You just push, 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 and yeah, I just got it wrong but it was good last race was fantastic so very pleased it was a hard fought weekend for the motorsports tv miniature race cars but this is how it looked championship points wise after all was said and done it was of course blake purdy in position number one bj lemon craig white matthew thewlis and gary roberts rounding out the top five and that wraps up round one of the australian motor racing series here at winton Lockie. What an opening round. Indeed it was, some fantastic victories, but also some great stories of drivers staging determined fightbacks from adversity as well. To stay up to date with all the latest AMRS news and upcoming races, just join us at amrseries.com.au. For now, on behalf of Lachlan Mansell, Kylie King and myself, Luke Heismans, it's goodbye from Winton Motor Raceway.